This video will discuss normalization and how to get our remaining constant b from our particle in a box wave functions. So I plotted up in the top left uh, psi 3 of x. This is our particle in a box wave function where the quantum number n equals 3. So it's going to have three waves or three humps on our sine function here. Then over to the right, I have our probability density function. This is psi star times psi, or the uh, absolute value or absolute magnitude of the wave function squared. So this is going to have three values up here. Notice how the middle one, which was negative, when it gets squared, you have three positive uh, humps of probability density here. According to the Born interpretation, as the value of psi star psi goes up, you are more likely to find the particle in that region, and as it goes down, you are less likely to find the particle there. With the uh, probability of finding the particle between x and x plus dx being proportional to psi star psi times dx. Okay, so our wave function for the particle in a box from the previous video was that psi n of x versus our quantum number and our position variable x is equal to some constant times sine n pi x over L, the length of our box here, going from 0 to L. The energy as a function of the quantum number n was equal to Planck's constant squared times n squared over 8 times mass of the particle times length of the box squared, where n starts at 1 and it goes up from there all the way to infinity. So our question for this video is how do we get b? Well, we said that psi star psi, or psi absolute value of psi squared times dx, is the probability that the, the position of the particle is between x and x plus dx. And also, from previous videos, we said that the integral, thus, from negative infinity to infinity, so the integral over all space of psi star times psi dx must equal 1. So this is psi star psi dx is the probability that the particle is in a little is in a little small location. Integrate that value over all locations, the probability better sum up to 100% or 1. Okay, so we also said that the wave function psi of x is 0 if x is less than 0 or greater than L. Outside of our box here, the potential energy is infinite, so our particle has to stay inside the box where the potential energy is zero. So instead of integrating from minus infinity to infinity, we're going to skip the parts where the wave function is zero and just integrate from zero to L. Okay, so first we'll set up that one equals the integral from zero to L of psi star, complex conjugate of B sine n pi x over L, times the wave function again, b sine n pi x over l, and then times dx. Okay, so there is no val there's no i here, there's no square root of minus one anywhere, so the complex conjugate is just equal to the wave function. So this thing here is just equal to the wave function squared. So we can factor out the constant b, there's two of them, so it's b squared, one equals b squared, integral is zero to l, sine squared n pi x over l dx. Okay, so we can use the trick that the sine squared of kx, trigonometric identity, is equal to 1 half times 1 minus cosine 2kx. So this means that 1 is equal to b squared over 2, coming from that 1 half, integral 0 to L of 1 minus cosine 2 n pi x over L dx. Okay. I'm going to move my uh, b squared over 2 to the other side, so I have 2 over b squared equals, uh, when I do this integral here, the integral of 1 dx is x, the integral of minus cosine 2n pi x over l is going to be minus l over 2 pi n sine 2n pi x over l, just the integral of cosine kx. So that's x minus l over 2 pi n sine 2n pi x over l. These are going to be evaluated from our limits 0 to l. Okay, so next we're going to evaluate these at l and then evaluate it at 0. So we have l for x. We have x equals 0 at 0. 
minus L over 2 pi N in both cases. And we have sine of 2 pi N L over L, so sine of 2 pi N. And then 2 pi N, 2 N pi 0 over L gives us sine of 0. So the sine of 2 pi N, the sine of 2 pi times any integer, that's going to be 360, 720, 1080, any value of 360 degrees times a constant, that's going to give us a 0. So sine of 0 is also 0. So the only thing that actually doesn't come out as 0 in this entire integral is the value of x at x equals L. So we get 2 over b squared equals L. And when we arrange this, we get b equals the square root of 2 over L. So this means that our final answer for the wave functions for the particle in a box versus our quantum number and over our position variable x is equal to the square root of 2 over length of the box times sine our quantum number n pi x over length of the box l. So this value b here is what we would call our normalization constant. So normalization constant in that it ensures that the integral over all space of psi star psi is equal to 1. And it completes our wave function. And now we can move on to do various other things and uh, interpret what our wave function means and compute other various properties of our particle from that.